I hope you all appreciate the shit I do, because I had to watch this twice, and the first viewing actually gave me a headache. Howdy doody, everyone! I'm back, and this time I come bearing a script! <laughs> so if y'all haven't heard, a Leafy Was Here ripoff is in some hot water for basically tormenting a young 15-year-old artist by the name of Slimer's Cryotic. Be sure to go and give her some love, by the way, all links in the description. I also want you to remember throughout this whole video that she is in fact 15. Madam is 19 the same age as I am. Now, this video isn't quite on that situation, at least directly. This is actually based on the video she released afterwards in response to all the callouts she was getting thanks to this lovely video by an even lovelier YouTuber by the name of Nani. She actually got in contact with the artist in question and she came with many a damning screenshot. So with all that out of the way, let me show you how much of a train wreck this video truly is before it magically disappears for whatever mysterious reason. What's your emergency? Hello? There's furries after me. There's furries lying about me. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm getting attacked. What do I do? This is an emergency. Okay, I need you to calm down. You are speaking too fast. What is the problem? Okay, I'm sorry, but what I'm trying to say is that there's thousands of furries attacking me based on fabrications. What do I do? Well, doesn't this seem familiar? 911, what's your emergency? Hello? Hello? I need your help. Somebody made an exposing video on- I didn't know you were this salty. I get not being able to make your own art, but you can't even make your own jokes. And who exactly are making these fabrications, ma'am? Oh, um, I I'd have to check. Hold on. Yeah, I don't really know. It's just some random furries that are making fabrications about me. So, well, what, what do I do? They're saying I'm canceled. They're saying they're gonna sue me or have me sued, and they wish that I get sued. Some are telling me to drop dead. Like, I'm not really sure what to do about all these attacks. One just commented cancel with a clown emote right now. What, what is happening? Ma'am, you're not canceled. What, what do you mean I'm not canceled? They're saying that. You can't get cancelled based on fabrications. The truth will always come out. So don't even worry about it, ma'am. You're not gonna get attacked forever. You need to go live your life. You're fine. And if furries keep threatening you, just call us back. We'll see what we can do. Welcome to the internet! But on a more serious note, guys, please don't attack anybody in this video. You can goof on them all you like, but death threats are not acceptable. Aw, thanks. You know what? You're right. You can't cancel someone based on fabrications, so... I'm just gonna go live my life. Maybe if I say fabrications enough times, people will believe me. Oh shit, 2017 flashbacks? Hello, I'm telling a story time in 2019, what? All right, sorry, I'm being dramatic like Morgs, but hey. So it's been a while since I told a story, and I know on my 50k q and I said that I would be telling a very, very special story for my 100k milestone, but please don't get it twisted, this is not the story. In fact, there's a wave of furries attacking me based on fabrications, like my little 911 intro said. Oh god, I'm having a Tana Mojo moment, oh my god. But I leave to Washington in like six days. I thought this would be a good story time to tell, and it's easy content to tell stories, right? Because I want to grind out some content before I leave, obviously. So that being said, welcome to the third or fourth story on my channel, which because I barely tell story times, I don't really know. And before I tell this story, please leave a like because the reptilian sisterhood is under attack. I repeat, the reptilian sisterhood is under attack. So I get back from this one star hospital that I did a story time about, which by the way, I didn't do it right when uh, it happened. I was obviously, you know, there against my will, but after I gave it some time, I was willing to finally tell that story. Um, and, you know, a little bit after that, I was like, hmm, I'm kind of bored of the whole gameplay expressing myself with the black screen thing. If you know where that reference is from, you're really OG. But, you know, black screens, gameplay commentaries, you know how it is. And I was like, I kind of want to try out stills. No, I don't want to be a stills channel. I don't really find those appealing. But every once in a while, while I play the gameplay, I want to, like, pop up a still. So I'm on DeviantArt looking at commissions that are open and just kind of browsing the art styles. And nothing was really appealing to me. I know there's a lot of art on there, but there wasn't 
anything appealing to me. So I was going through my fan art and there is somebody that made me fan art that actually looked pretty fucking dope. So I hit them up in the DMs and I'm like, yo, are your commissions open? And if so, what's your prices? This girl said she didn't have a PayPal, but she wants to accept the commission anyway. So I was like, no, 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 wait a minute. If I can't PayPal you, could I at least give you like a verbal shout out or like just something? Like I have this J Station video I'm working on very soon. And that's probably something I'd use the stills for. So could I just shout you out in that and like just give your whole Instagram a fucking segment, like something? And she was really cool with that. So I was like, okay, great. Thanks for accepting my commission, blah, blah, blah and she was just really happy to do it. It's not a commission if you did not pay them. That is accepting a request. And also, pay attention here. She said she would give a segment showing her Instagram alongside a shout out and credit, which FYI, you should do anyway, regardless if you paid for it or not. Neither of the videos that have the art have credit. So thanks for basically admitting that you f***ed up. Now at that point, she asked me to be friends and wanted Discord calls with me. So I was like, sure, what's your Discord? Or maybe I gave her mine, I don't really remember. But yeah, she ended up getting added onto my personal Discord, and we had phone calls. And I'm talking like a six hour one, which I will probably elaborate on a little bit later. And the whole friendship aspect of this was getting a little weird, I'm not gonna lie, just because she lied about everything. Oh boy, lied about everything, huh? Well, we'll see. But also, because your girl had to wait two weeks for stills, and I'm just like, oh, should I have commissioned someone else? Like, I know she couldn't get paid because she doesn't have a PayPal, but I literally said I would do all of these things for her, and it's almost like they're not taking this as a commission. It's almost like I requested this or something. Like, no, this is a commission. Did you pay her? Because if not, it's not a commission. Exposure isn't the same thing as money. And even if she said she'd do it for free, it's still not a commission. Not to mention the fact that you went back on that deal, so the art isn't yours. That's the equivalent of paying for your groceries and then going to the store in the middle of the night to take money out of the cash register. Also, boo fuckity who? You had to wait two whole weeks for free art? It's not like she has a personal life or something. You've been an adult for what, about a year now? Did you forget that high school is a thing? From what I can see of some of the screenshots Slimers posted, she made at least six stills for you. Taking a look at her art, as a fellow artist, I'd estimate that each still took about three to four hours minimum. Keep in mind, I'm basing this off of a surface value observation. I don't know of any medical history, art programs, or techniques that she has or uses that could affect the speed in which she makes them. We even talked about her getting paid through PayPal because she claimed she's gonna get a PayPal like next year or some shit. So I just was kind of appalled at the service being so unprofessional. A favor is not a service. I'm saying it was a favor because she did not get paid. Also, stop talking about this child like she's some restaurant you ate at. She is a person. And because she didn't have a PayPal, I was kind of brainstorming ideas and expressing this to her. So one idea that I had was maybe I could contact one of my merch agents on FanFiber and I could have been like, yo, let's make some, I don't know, 100k special art, like merch or whatever. And could we have this girl take a cut, like something? I was just going to arrange something with my agents, maybe like... I don't know, I told her about the J Station verbal shout out, which by the way was like from day one. I was like, girl, you're gonna accept this commission. The more she calls this a commission, the bigger this clown emoji gets, and the smaller her brain appears in comparison. Anyway, can I just do this for you? Like, so she knew the J Station thing was coming up. And uh, I even told her when she gets her PayPal, I'll just pay her as well. But yeah, unfortunately, she just couldn't get paid. So, like I said, brainstorming away, thinking of stuff that I could do back for her. It's the least I could do. So two weeks go by, I finally get my stills. And uh, I guess she was just confused about the due date. So I was really nice about it. I was a little annoyed because I did have a lot of important projects I wanted to work on. Wait, wait, wait. You never said anything about a due date. No DMs or anything to prove that there was one? Like, you can't get mad at someone for not reaching a deadline you never told them about. Not to mention, is this meant to make her look bad? Cause you just come off as extremely entitled. Where? This artist didn't make me my free art fast enough. Oh, life must be so hard. With these stills, but I was like, 
it's fine like I got them now there's nothing to be upset about I'm gonna go get on the grind I started working on my J station video but before I could even start on that I already had worked on a Dominic Schmidt video because that's easy content it didn't really need stills blah 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 the video is already done I just need to make a thumbnail get it out and then I could start working on the J station video so I make the thumbnail with one of the stills and I send it to her in DMs before the video is even up and she's like oh my god it's so adorable and I literally say the same thing back because it's actually really fucking adorable like the colors and everything about it is just so cute and yeah that was the last time i talked to her professionally because then from that point on she became incredibly incredibly unprofessional i have never worked with someone so i cannot emphasize it enough so unprofessional the more times you say how unprofessional she was the more you remind me of those kids that would brag about how mature they are i mean you also gave this girl your personal discord and go on to say you gave her your number right that seems like you became friends. Even if you work with your friends professionally, you don't have to be professional with them all the time. Ever heard of having fun? So I get my Dominic Schmidt video out there. Everything's going good. A few hours go by and I'm looking into like overlays because for this J Station video, I wanted it to be heavily edited. And I mean like to the best of my capability, fucking purchasing shit for this video. Like if you've ever seen a YouTuber with the animated like subscribe, hit the bell thing, like that's like an overlay that you could purchase. So I was looking at these shops that you could purchase like custom overlays for. And there's like an Instagram one where it's custom and looks professional as fuck. And I was like, okay, if the whole J Station interview is going to be, like, really well made, which, by the way, if you're watching this in the future, um, me and Jay decided to, like, say, f*** that, let's just do this in Minecraft, so it's, it's just going to be a Minecraft interview, but basically, back in the day, well, a few days ago, and in the moment, I was like, this has to be edited perfectly, and even her segment has to be perfect, so this f***ing overlay was $30, or like some custom like Instagram overlay, I don't know. And you have to like give them the Instagram page you want and they're just gonna do it, right? So I was really excited for this, thankfully. Thank God if he exists that I didn't purchase it in the moment, I was gonna do it later that night because who wants to invest $30 into a liar like could not be me. So yeah, I get to work on this video and I check my comments, I would say maybe like, I don't know, a couple hours later. I know it was within 24 hours of that video being uploaded, definitely under 10 hours. So yeah, within at least 10 hours of it being up, I finally checked the comments again, and uh, I stopped reading comments after two days. So if the video's been up for 48 hours, I completely stopped reading the comments. And uh, I see that she's asking for credit for the thumbnail in my description, but in a public YouTube comment section. And uh, to give you some context, this girl has had a lot of phone calls with me. I'm saying countless phone calls. Now here's the part that I somewhat agree with her on. Yes, Slimer should have contacted you first, especially if she already had contact with you to begin with. But again, keep in mind, she is 15. It is also very likely that she has never done something like this before, let alone for a YouTuber with a fairly sized following such as your own. She also apologized to you, but you have apparently decided to be immature and unprofessional and hold on to that and not let it go. And some of them being over six hours long at her request. How do you request a six hour phone call? Hunter. Hey, hey. Hunter, listen to me, listen to me. I request that you have a six hour call with me. Do you understand? N no. No, 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 you don't, you don't understand. Because I requested it, you have to have a six hour call with me. On the dot, do you understand? No. On top of that, she has my personal phone number, my personal Discord, my Instagram that she communicates with me on. So I was really appalled. And the fact that a couple hours prior to her comment, she told me that the thumbnail was adorable in Discord DM. So I was, I was like, why didn't you just DM me here? You have my number. You've called me a bunch. Didn't we call earlier? What is your deal? Wow. Way to edit this in in tiny ass font. Also, no screenshots. And she wasn't rude in the comment, so I didn't mean what's your deal as in like, what's your deal with the comment? I mean like, what's your deal with like not being professional? If you take a shot every time she says professional in this video, your liver would rip itself out of your ass. 
colon strangle you with your own colon. So back to the point, I go to her directly and I'm like, hey, I stopped reading comments after 48 hours and had I not read that, I wouldn't have known. And the fact that you have my number, we've been in calls, you have my personal discord, my Instagram, you could have just came to me. You even texted me a few hours ago about how the thumbnail is adorable and all of a sudden you're taking this up with a, a public YouTube comment section. Well, aren't you professional with your use of whack and sh ton grammar mistakes? Like the kid's writing is so clean, you could put that in an essay. What the f are you doing? Also, no one credits their commission unless it's free slash complimentary by the artist. First, for the last time, it's not a commission if it's free. Second, no, you always credit the artist. If you're using someone else's art, even if you paid for it or it's fan art, you credit the artist. Look, it's not the fact that it's public that's, I don't know, something that bothers me. It's the fact she wouldn't come to me about it after she literally asked me to be friends. Like, the day I had commissioned her, she was like, could we be friends? Could we get phone calls? Like, she was just all about getting my attention. And I just, I don't know, I just wanted stills. But at the same time, she seemed really cool. So I was like, sure, I could use some friends. And she basically said the same thing. But it's like, okay, if we're apparently friends and you're, you know, having phone calls with me, wouldn't you just come to me like a public YouTube comment section? What if I didn't read it? What if I didn't read it? But anyways, I read it and I immediately fix it. I literally hit her up, go to her directly. I express to her that I feel that what she did is unprofessional. I tell her you have all of this, these ways to contact me and you don't. You take it up with a public YouTube comment section. Had I not read that, I wouldn't have known anything or I wouldn't have known how you felt. Again, she is 15. I'm not saying she's entirely free from fault because of that, and that it wasn't unprofessional. What I'm saying is that you are holding on to this one mistake above her head like it's the end of the world. It is petty and, oh yeah, unprofessional. So, uh, I basically tell her, f*** your shout out, let's just do long term credit, and she completely agrees. So I basically just start crediting her. Now I got this fixed within 24 hours, even like less than 10 hours. And it would have been fixed sooner had she just come to me, but she didn't. So that was a red flag. Also, did you ever possibly consider that she panicked? Artists get stuff stolen all the time. It's a risk that anyone who uploads any type of content takes. As someone dealing with this for the first time, it's possible that she went public first just in case you refused in private, and so she could have some type of support and as a way of crediting herself on your video. Yes, she should have contacted you first, but she apologized and you just can't seem to let that go. <laughs> But I want to be friends with you, madam. Oh my god, I love you. And then you contact me through a public YouTube comment section <laughs> after getting my number. Imagine that. So the first thing I do is after I tell her how I feel about the unprofessionalism, I immediately have to fix what was done wrong, which I didn't know it was wrong. I didn't really understand it. I thought if you use the stills in a video, that's when you credit them. I didn't realize that you had to do that for a thumbnail. That's just something I didn't know. How in the world did you not know that? The thumbnail is still technically a part of the video. Wow, not only did you take Leafy Was Here's video style right down to the game being played in the background and his Retilian army thing, but you also took his inability to credit the people that help in your vids. So once I saw that comment, I immediately fixed it. She was credited in my About Me and in the description of the video where I used the thumbnail. Mind you, the video did not have the stills in them. It was just my gameplay and my commentary, but the stills were used for the thumbnail. Okay, I just want to make that clear. You still used someone else's art. So I tell her, hey, I'm sorry, it should have been common courtesy. I didn't really want to ramble too much about like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't want to make it sound like there's a lot of excuses or I don't know, something like that. You mean like what you just did 20 seconds ago? So I really just stuck with like, what is important to address here? So I address the unprofessionalism and then I address the credit thing. So I tell her in the DMs, it should have been common sense for me to credit if I use it in the thumbnail and I'm sorry and I got it fixed immediately. However, you need to f***ing directly come to me because a, a comment section like had I not read that nothing would have got done and then she apologized to me and then I was like okay thanks I apologize to you for not you know using my common sense I'm so sorry now that's all I said to her because like I said I didn't want to make it seem like there's excuses but in my reality I was like I thought you had to credit when you used the stills right and then for long-term credit put them in the about me you still use the art how are you still not getting this 
Also, if you plan to use them in the long term, why didn't you put them in the about me to begin with? This whole segment is just you contradicting yourself. You can't say you didn't know and comment courtesy in the same f***ing place! I didn't think that I would have to for a thumbnail, but you know, I guess I'm just new to this, so I just wanted to fix it immediately once I saw the comment. As unprofessional as she was, I just wanted to make things good. So that's what happened. She was really happy with the credit. I was pretty happy. And uh, yeah, I just thought we could move on from that. Judging by the fact you talked about this simple misunderstanding for nearly five minutes, I'ma say you didn't move on from that. She even said, I hope this doesn't ruin like us working together, I really hope we can. And she apologized to me for not letting me know she didn't actually want the J Station thing or whatever that we've been agreeing on. Uh, she just abruptly wanted text credit all of a sudden and she should have let me know. She did let you know. That was a part of the original agreement. It didn't suddenly come out of nowhere. And you said it yourself, it's common courtesy. And I was like, all right, cool, thanks. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Or so I thought, and this is where the six hour phone calls come into play for this habitual liar. You're acting like she forced you to talk to her for six hours and forced you to have calls with her. When it comes to an online call, it takes two to tango, buddy. <laughs> dun dun dun. This really boring story takes a big turn. Oh no. Oh god, okay, I need to stop. So she starts making like public posts or whatever about how I never credited her when I did. So I was really confused about that and at that point she had messaged me telling me that she really wants to continue working with me and she hopes that uh, her unprofessionalism did not really get in the way of that. And I was like, absolutely not. You're literally lying to people and asking people to come harass me about credit when you actually got credit so i was like i don't want to work with you anymore bye so at that point i block her on discord she goes to instagram and starts harassing me oh surprise she didn't go to my youtube comment section this time she went on fucking instagram and look i blocked her because i was so nice to her i got things done very quick as quick as possible for someone that wasn't professional and came to me personally like i really did get things done and i did everything that i should have correctly now i'm not going to comment on this bit as a lot of it is explained in debunked anani's video but this bit i got things done very quick as quick as possible oh my god it's so difficult to credit someone guys it's so hard it's not like it takes Five seconds to copy and paste a link and then type this is the person who did so and so. No, it's so hard. And she decided to not only take this up in a public YouTube comment section. Let it go. Let it go. I'm gonna fucking jump out my window. But then like make up a lie about me publicly on her social media and say I never gave her credit to begin with. Even though there's literally screenshots of the credit in our Discord chat. Where? So I'm like confused and that's why I blocked her. I was like after I had been so nice. Never trust anyone that says this. If they have to repeat how nice they were, then they probably weren't as nice as they said they were. I got this taken care of and then after taking care of it very quickly and professionally. Stop talking about how professional you were. Jesus Christ, we get it. I'm surprised this video is still monetized after how much you've sucked your own dick like working on her like whole segment thing, working on the J Station thing, and she just lies about me like that. I don't tolerate liars at all. I hope you don't have mirrors in your house then. <laughs> Not at all. You could be a hypocrite, you could be anything in this world, but if you're a liar, I just can't f with you. Like, you, you need to leave my life. I hate liars. That's the one thing I cannot stand. Doxers, on the other hand, I'm totally cool with. So I leave her alone, right? And then she just starts harassing me on Instagram and I'm like, leave me alone. I mean, this girl spammed me. I started getting like six, 10 notifications on my phone from the same person. And uh, I get angry. I'm like, dude, block me, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. You are the most unprofessional prick. I swear to God, if she says professional or unprofessional again, I'm going to jump out my window. Also, I love it when people say block me. Like, do it your f***ing self, you lazy bitch. You did it on Discord, why didn't you do it on Instagram? Also again, no receipts. 
You'd think if you were going to do a video on this, you'd gather some receipts. Considering the fact you stole something, it's no wonder why there's none. I have ever worked, like, leave me alone. And look, if you block a friend and then, you know, that friend comes to you through a different social media, that's a completely different story. Like, it's your friend, right? But I barely knew her. She, at this point, had lied to me and had been very unprofessional, like I said, like, 50 times. The fact that you're aware makes me even angrier. And again, f where? But she had just made up a lie about me and started sending her friends after me and yeah, like I said, I don't take very kindly to liars. So I just really wanted to be left alone and I had blocked her so she should have taken the hint to leave me alone, but she didn't so yeah. That's the only time I got like genuinely upset with her, like it wasn't even the fact she like made up a lie about me. Uh, at that point, I was just like, please leave me alone. I don't like liars at all. This is also explained in Ani's video. Also, we get it. You don't like liars and you're having an identity crisis. We know. Well, this surprisingly was a part of her master plan. Now, within our six hour phone call, now a lot of lies are going to be uh, kind of revealed here. There's a lot of red flags. And I'm not even sure where to begin with all of these lies and like red flags. Mind you, there's like a big lie. The big lie was like fabricating. Oh yeah, I totally believe you. An incredibly vague point with nothing to back it up? Solid. You know, story about me which never happened, but there's like just little lies in her life. So for example, when she made a public like fabrication about me, she made it about age and I'm not sure why. So I didn't see the post, I'm just saying this because people have told me, I mean even friends have told me. Oh my god. So not only do you not have any screenshots, you are basing this off of hearsay? At least we all heard that somebody purred, which is incontestable proof. So I have no reason to not believe them and what they say, but um, she was making it about age all of a sudden, and that was really strange. So she would be like, oh my god, she's three years older than me. I'm the younger teen. I'm three years younger, and she's like three years older than me, and like, I'm a child. She's an adult, but you know, like, I'm the younger teenager. She's the older teenager. Like, she bullied me. Like, she's an adult. Like, she bullied, like, you know, and I'm just like, what? What does age have to do with anything? I mean, again, this is hearsay with no proof. But even if it was absolutely true, yeah, you did. You, an adult took advantage of a fan of yours who happened to be a child. You took their hard work that they made for free as a fan of yours and proceeded to not give the proper credit. Again, you are an adult. Another thing you took from Leafy, a child who makes fun of children but can't take it when they themselves are called out. About you fabricating a story about me, like- I've been looking for the evidence of the midnight way. What? Then after making it about age, she lied about her age to me and my friends and claimed that she was going to go to college next year. Incontestable proof. Now there are some people that may argue, well, like places in the UK for example, can't you go to college at like age 16 or something? And uh, yeah, the problem is this girl lives in fucking Missouri. Didn't need to say that, could have just said the states. So I'm guessing revealing someone's personal information is professional now? So no. However, there are children in uh, the U.S. that they can skip grades and can be very special and, you know, they can go to college early. That's not the case for this girl. <laughs> and you can ask, like, anyone that's been in a voice chat with her, especially, like, my friend. He texted me mid-voice chat with her that she just did not carry herself well. And I was like, what did you mean? You're... And he's just like, I don't think she she's being truthful about like going to college like she literally acts like a child like she laughs like a child she seems obsessive and creepy about you and she's like she just doesn't carry herself well i can't see her going to college and i basically just told him to f off because i really liked her at the time like you know i just told my friend to f off pretty much i mean we're all friends it wasn't a hostile f off but still i was like yeah whatever f off you don't have to like her but i think she's cool and um but looking back on it now she definitely didn't carry herself well so this is where the lies come in, okay? She says to, like, the public about the story, and like I said, she made it about age randomly, that she's 15. But she told me and my friends that she's going to college and insinuated that she's our age. I'm not playing the clip again. 
So I was extremely confused. And she even said she'd be getting a PayPal next year. However, after looking into it, you can't even get a working PayPal unless it's like, I don't know, a parent's or something when you're 16 or 15. You have to be 18 to, you know, have it working. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments about that. I might be, but that's after doing some research. You literally just said that they can get one if it's under a parent's name. So yes, she can still be 15 or 16 and get a PayPal account. So we were really confused why she was trying to portray herself as an adult. Maybe because you all seem to look down on her. If she lied about her age, and I'm not defending her if she did, I'm self-aware enough to know that 15-year-olds don't always make the right decisions. Again, I'm not saying it's right if she did, and a message to Slimers, it's best not to talk about your age at all when talking to people online. But at the same time, you and your group seem to constantly be condescending towards her. That, or she could be an adult and she could be telling the truth about going to college, but she's lying to her audience about being 15. And also, why is she making this about age and trying to, like, I don't know, play this victim card when she's not a victim of anything. Same could be said for you! Literally all of this could have been avoided if you just copied and pasted a link to her Instagram, but you just had to make a big deal of it and here we are. Yeah, I just fabricated a story about a public figure. L let me just make this about age. I, I genuinely did not understand. Now these are some other topics like in our phone call that were very like red flags. So, she was obsessed with cancel culture. It was something she would go on and on and on about for hours to the point she had to apologize to me and say, sorry, I'm just really passionate about this topic. And that should have been a red flag to me. Like, she talked pretty much the majority of our phone calls. I'm just not very talkative with, like, my friends. It's just my friends that usually tell the stories, and that's kind of the dynamic we had as well. So it was just basically her talking for five hours while I talked for, like, one, <laughs> pretty much. But... She went on about cancel culture and she loved talking about the Slazo situation. That was something that really piqued her interest. And she went on about cancel culture for like, I would say a solid three hours. And it, you know, wasn't a red flag to me. I just thought it was something she would like to talk about, right? But looking back on it, such a big red flag. She would even ask me, like, isn't it so like shocking that you could just ruin someone's reputation with words like she would you know kind of exaggerate it like that and you know i'd be like yeah it seems pretty crazy and little did i know i was like her guinea pig like she <laughs> she wanted to like test this out with me so she makes up this story on her social media that she never got credit from me and that like, I just refused to credit her. I was insulting her a bunch of times apparently, which never happened. The only time I got hostile with her was when I blocked her and then she started spamming me on Instagram to get my attention. And it was really annoying because I obviously want to be left alone. So I was like, you are the most unprofessional prick I've ever worked with. That's the closest to an insult that you will get from that situation. And I had every right to call her that because she was harassing me. She was fabricating stories about me, which obviously never happened and she was very unprofessional to work with. I'm not gonna delve into this part since a lot of it is hearsay and despite the fact that she talks about all these Instagram posts, she never shows any, so I have nothing to go off of. Not to mention this, just this. Now, this is also technically hearsay, but it's hearsay from a lot of the people in her comment section, so... And after getting harassed and having this person I worked with lie about me, of course, I'm going to call them an unprofessional prick. That's what they are. But yeah, she lied about, like, apparently I insulted her a bunch of times, which never happened. Um, lied about her age publicly. Lied about uh, her unprofessionalism. Never really owned up to how unprofessional she was. She just acted like, yep, my story's real. Like, I never got credit to begin with. I'm very much inclined to believe her, considering the fact that you're still doing it. There's no credit to her anywhere, and another artist actually came forward saying that all of her credits were removed as well, despite the fact you're using it on your merch. Which, that's not true. She did get her credit very quickly, and I removed it because she decided to fabricate a story about never getting it when it was clearly there. Logic! Remove the credit, but still use the art despite the fact she apparently lied about you not giving her credit, thus making everybody who comes to check your page and or description to believe her. Absolutely flawless logic. Absolute mad lad. 
And why would I want to promote a person on my social media that had decided to fabricate a story about me? Then why is the art still on your channel and thumbnails? I don't need an anatomy class to tell me you have a brain, so it'd be great if you would start f***ing using it! I'm not gonna promote that. I have worked two and a half years for my, like, following, and it's just like... I feel like anyone in their right mind would not promote someone that's willing to slander and fabricate a story about them. Absolutely not. Like, you just don't do that. So, of course I'm gonna remove it. Which is a part of her master plan to really test out cancel culture, which is something she's so fascinated with. It should have been a red flag, but it wasn't. But yeah, I think she was just kind of being a genius about it low-key. Like, okay, if I fabricate this, say she never gave me credit, then she removes the credit because, you know, I lied about it and she wouldn't want to promote me then it would actually, like, help my case because it looks like she never gave me credit. Then why the f*** is it still there? That's like being put on trial for murder and going up to the stand with the murder weapon still in your hand! It doesn't matter if she lied at that point and put it in your hand when you decided to still hold it! That's not a master plan that's banking on the possibility that you're either incredibly stubborn or a f***ing idiot. So, that's kind of like a f***ing top tier, like, 2000 IQ f***ing play right there. I've never experienced something like that. I was like, wow, that's kind of smart. That's kind of f***ing funny. And don't get me wrong when I say that's kind of funny and smart. Like, it's obviously a shitty thing to fabricate stories about public figures. I mean, 2019 has been full of it, like, James Charles and, like, all these people. Like, it, it, I don't know why cancel culture is so, like, rampant right now like people just want to fabricate stuff it's one thing to like cancel someone if they actually did something but these days it's nothing but fabrication after fabrication after fabrication and i genuinely don't understand why people would do this it attention like i i don't know cause i couldn't picture myself doing this to someone else but yeah i'm only calling it funny or like smart or whatever because if you are going to uh fabricate something to cancel someone that's such a 2000 iq play <laughs> <laughs> to like lie about something so that the person removes the credit and then it just helps your case. I'm just like, whoa, two th not even 2,000, 3,000 IQ play. So me and my friend did some reflection, okay, after our experiences with this habitual liar. And because she fabricated a story about me that never happened, constantly lied about me to like the public and her friends. And on top of that, lied about her age and occupation. She tried to make herself seem like a child publicly to, you know, play her victim card a little bit better. I'm not really sure why when she was trying to portray herself as an adult to me and my friends. I mean, I have friends that are witnesses to this that were in calls with her where she just goes on about getting into college or some shit, like, you know, and getting a PayPal and all this fucking shit. But, um, it's just, like, weird. So I'm, like, reflecting her phone calls. I think about the cancel culture she went on and on and on about. Isn't it so cool you could ruin someone's reputation with words? It's so f***ed up, am I right? But our very first phone call, which was, like, the day I commissioned her and she wanted a phone call and requested it, so we got into one and it lasted, like, six hours. Within the first ten minutes, it could have been even, like, less than that. Could have been within the first five minutes of the phone call. She tells me that her father tried to rape her. Now, obviously, um, as a victim myself of sexual assault, I can say this right now. You don't talk to a stranger or get in a phone call with someone you've never talked to before. And you go, yeah, so my dad tried to rape me once. Like, that's just, no. I am literally a victim, too. And, like, you, you don't... Like, anyone watching this video... If you're out here watching this right now, could you please confirm this for me? You are a victim of sexual assault and like you just constantly tell strangers like what happened to you within five minutes of meeting them. Like that's weird. You want to know what else you don't do? Spread that information to your 50k followers. The next couple of minutes are just her talking about how she believes Slimers is lying about her assault. This wasn't necessary. She wasn't spreading this online. She wasn't putting it on her Instagram. She was only telling you. People who are fans of others have been known to come forward quickly about how they feel and what they've been through because they trust that person and they feel they know that person. You talking about this wasn't necessary to the video and it just shows how much of a disgusting person you are. This didn't need to be brought to the public. This information that she trusted you with. I don't know if it's real, but I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. But the big issue here is that this should have been kept private. Also, this segment makes no sense. You say there were articles of the incident, and according to this text, told her to tell the police, but if there were articles, 
then the police would have already known. So you're either lying about the situation, or you're showing again how inept you are. And then you yourself admit the same to your audience of 50,000 strangers, and then you tell other victims to comment if they do that, meaning that they would be admitting it to a public forum accessible by other strangers. Look, I'm sorry about what you've been through, but how can you not see that you have contradicted every point you've made thus far? I mean, I commission her and she instantly wants to call with me and ask to be friends. She immediately tells me she gets raped within five minutes or, you know, attempted rape or something. As she fabricates a story about me publicly, she also lies about her age publicly. It is just an overall strange situation. To make things even worse, there's also another, like, small lie. So, uh, she asked if there's a better way to contact me or whatever, and I was just like, nah, it's just Discord or whatever. You can have my number, though. I gave her my number. She was like, she was like, I don't have a number. I'm so sorry. So I was like, oh, it's fine. Just text me on Discord. But then the day she gave me her stills, all of a sudden, she's like, here's my number. Text me. And I asked her about it. I'm like, hey, didn't you, like, say you didn't have a phone number? Um like since when did you get one right i was just kind of being chill about it because i was really confused and she just completely avoided it did not even answer my question just like changed the topic you have discord you have her blocked but you can still screenshot the conversation it doesn't just disappear some f***ing evidence would sure be nice right about now so it's little lies like that. Now that phone number was completely fake. It's just as fake as her. So don't even worry about it. It's just like a small lie. Don't even worry about it, huh? What an odd thing to say about you receiving her so-called fake number. Could it be that you're trying to cover your ass for doxing her number? But that's really crazy. I mean, I've dealt with some habitual liars in my lifetime, okay? My ex is a habitual liar and he's, you know, confessed about it and he's just like, you know, it's a problem I have. Like, I really need to fix this and I'm so sorry. I just lie about stupid stuff constantly and I don't know why. It's just psychological. I need help. And, you know, that's something I can respect. And he would never fabricate a story about me. It's just lies, like little lies about his life for attention. Like, I have a uh, million dollar mansion. Like, just shit like that. But this girl, it, it seems to me she likes um, a bad things happen to me attention, so she'll just fabricate anything. I mean, she could lie about me. Of course she's gonna lie about her age and all of these things publicly. It's strange. There's just something not right here. How you could be so kind to someone. Careful, that's one tall high horse you put yourself on, you could fall off. And, and give them credit and they make up a story that they never got it. And then it helps their case when I actually remove it. Ah! There is no case to begin with. You got it. You were very happy. I was very happy and you just wanted attention And I literally messaged her like I cannot work with you if you're going to fabricate a story about me I cannot do it like I have to remove your credit Like I cannot promote a person that is willing to slander public figures for attention Apparently you can keep the art though you cannot be fabricating stories like this when I have been nothing but professional to you You can't be doing that it's not a fabrication anymore if you prove them right, and again, no receipts. I'm not gonna promote it, people. I might actually lose my mind at how ass backwards this chick's logic is. Period. I'm not gonna have respect for a person that has absolutely no respect for me, that has no issue, not only being unprofessional to me, but to fabricate a story that never happened onto their social media. I cannot do that. I really cannot. I'm not going to promote someone that completely is so disrespectful and has no respect for me. No wonder why you said you're okay with hypocrites. So tell me in the comments why I should have respect for someone that doesn't respect me. Please go on and please do so because I'm not. Period. No one's going to change me. No one's going to change the way I think. This is common sense to me. You don't give respect to people that don't give respect to you. I've given her all of my respect, fixed things very quickly. She apologized to me for multiple things, and so did I, even though I was in the right the entire time. But I still apologized just to make sure everything was good, everything was made right, we're both feeling good, and she still is fabricating a story. I can't credit someone, like I said, that's going to fabricate a story about me. This just, no, I'm not going to do it. I can't respect people that don't respect me. So it would have been nice, but at the end of the day, it is my commission. This video brings me physical pain.
so I might continue to use it. Now, after the situation, I immediately went to some other artists. Artists, is, is that a word? Um, but I went to some, like, more artists, and I was basically looking into getting, like, another commission. Other artists who you have also refused to credit. And, and uh, just because, like, if that person's dead to you or, like, someone fabricates a story about you, you obviously don't really want to use their art. But because she decided to disrespect me, I feel that it is needed for me to do the same thing back. How professional of you. She is, you know, still fabricating stories about me for attention. And so it's like, well, they're, it's my commission anyways. <laughs> I don't have the energy left to scream anymore and I'll fucking God! Ah, I hate this! Why not use it, you know? F*** you. You wanna lie about me? Alright, I'm just gonna- it's my commission. Man, that's one big clown emoji. Also, may I reiterate, how professional of you. As much as I would have loved to give it to her or keep it there, you know, she just decided to fabricate a story, of course I have to remove it, but... Um, yeah, in the moment before she started, like, blowing up, I was just, like, yeah, looking into some different stills, some different artists, like, seeing what I could do, but the more people or, like, her weird, like, rabid following that just, I don't know, believe her lies, the more they tell me, like, you need to credit her, you blah blah blah, you have no morals, when she literally is the one that fabricated a story about me. You literally sound like a child. That never happened. The more it makes me want to use those stills, I'm not going to credit someone that fabricates a story about me. Period. So I'm gonna sit back and prove her fabrication like a f***ing idiot. I'm sorry if I'm somewhat harsh in this video, but this video legitimately just, uh, frustrated the hell out of me. That's pretty much the end of the video. She goes on to talk about another story of how she didn't credit another individual who edited one of her videos. All I gotta say is, this video was painful to watch, and now I remember why Leafy's videos went out of style. They're filled with repetition, rambling, no evidence, a lot of contradictions, and a lot of stupid points. Glad to see you're at least dedicated to being someone's bootleg. Madam, this whole situation would have never happened if you either just f***ing let go of her little mistake, credited her and left it there, or just removed the art entirely. You do not own the artwork, your entitled little a got it for free as a gift from someone who was a fan of your content. So the lesson to be learned here is don't let 50k subscribers get to your head. If you want to keep your precious precious subscribers, don't let it get to your head. Thanks so much for watching this video and something I want to make very clear is don't go and attack her or anyone else involved. This whole situation could have been so easily solved but she just wants to make it more difficult and she shouldn't be rewarded for that. Again, be sure to give Slimer some love over on Instagram. If you're an artist out there, it may be best to avoid this one. And a message to Madame. I highly doubt you'll see this, but 19 year old to 19 year old, get your head out your ass and grow up. You are the adult in this situation, and it would be better if you start acting more like one. Yes, we may be fresh adults, but that still means we are adults. We have more responsibilities now, and a major part of being an adult and being professional is learning to admit our mistakes and move on. It's about being the bigger person, even if we feel that someone has wronged us. Practice what you preach on being professional, and learn that evidence is a thing you need if you're going to start throwing claims around. I can only hope that maybe the videos being made about you help you realize how much of a sh** person you're being, and that you learn and grow from this. I don't like seeing YouTubers get cancelled because they don't learn anything from it. This isn't about you as a content creator. This is about you as a person. But our content reflects aspects of who we are as people. And as a content creator, is this really how you want to be remembered? As the petty, immature, entitled brat who started a feud with a 15 year old over you being stubborn? I mean, the choice is yours. Saying I'm sorry or having a 15 minute conversation can go a really long way, and I think people tend to forget that. But that's just my two cents, take it or leave it. Anyway, thanks again for watching the video and I hope you all enjoyed. I'm still relatively new to commentary, so if there's anything you want me to look into, I'm willing to give it a glance. This is farewell for now my little monsters, and I'll see you all in whatever the hell pops up next. Bye!